Energy is a popular topic right now. Whether it's looming economic crisis, soaring greenhouse gas emissions, or even geopolitical instability, energy seems to have a hand in all of them. There's no shortage of articles about the challenges we face. Some portray a bright future, while others paint a grim reality. But what does that future actually look like? For the first video in the energy series, we're going to look at the current state of energy and how it will shape our future. You may be aware of a number of exciting technologies. Small modular reactors, lithium ion storage, fusion. What makes these technologies so exciting? If they're so great, why aren't we using them already? After all, the problems with current energy production are well documented. As we'll see, we're caught in a trap that's proving difficult to escape from. The clock is ticking on some of our major global challenges, but fixing one problem might make others worse. Understanding the trap sets the stage for unraveling the future of energy. Why is energy so important? How does it affect our greatest challenges? What exactly is the global energy trap? Human's ability to harness energy goes back, way back. In fact, our ancestors utilized the first biofuels over a million years before Homo sapiens appeared. We are, of course, talking about the burning of wood and other biomaterials to generate fire. In other words, human energy consumption is much older than humanity itself. We've been burning dead matter to exploit its energy for entire existence. At first, we used fire to keep warm and boost the nutritional value of food through cooking. Later, we discovered we could use it to craft tools. 10,000 years ago, we finally discovered a new source of energy, animals. Initially domesticated for food and materials, within 2,000 years, we were harnessing the muscle power of oxen to till fields. 1,000 years later, we'd create sails to leverage wind power. That was just the beginning. There were many more energy breakthroughs over the following millennia. But around 2000 years ago, the Romans started to burn a new biofuel. Unlike wood, this particular fuel had been dead for a very long time. Let's take a quick step back. In physics, energy is an essential property of the universe. It can change form, but must be conserved. You are likely aware of many types of energy, from heat and light to chemical and gravitational potential. Energy is quite literally all around us, but just because it's there doesn't mean we can use it. In upcoming videos, we'll investigate technologies that can improve the production, storage, distribution, and consumption of energy. From next generation nuclear to local battery storage, our energy future might look very different indeed. What will it take to make these technologies viable? The next video in this series asks where the opportunities lie and what is required to realize them. But first, this video seeks to understand why we need to upgrade our energy system and why we haven't done it already. Picture yourself in Britain at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. Perhaps you could have sensed that change was coming, but nobody could have grasped the scale. Traditionally, all your energy was sourced locally. Coal was known, but its usage was relatively niche. And then it wasn't. By the end of the Industrial Revolution, coal accounted for 90% of energy consumption, and the change only took 80 years. The energy boom gave birth to steam power used to move pistons and spin turbines. We no longer had to rely on muscle power, and the result was an unprecedented technological acceleration. Trains, textiles, typewriters, the start of the modern world. During the 19th century, global energy usage doubled and the effect on society was significant. Prior to this, growth in energy consumption was proportional to population growth. But by the end of the century, it was clear that this was no longer true. Thanks to fossil fuels, energy consumption per person climbed dramatically and was a key factor in the rapid population explosion. However, while the energy doubling of the 19th century was big, in the next century it would grow by a whole order of magnitude. The world we see today is a direct result of that. 
To say we're dependent on energy is an understatement. The complexity of global energy hides just how reliant on it we are. It's not just the lights in our house or our journey to work. Energy powers food production, our water supply, and all the technologies essential to our survival. Everything around us, almost every aspect of our lifestyle requires energy, lots of it. To get a better appreciation, let's look at the pencil. With just three to six parts, surely understanding its energy footprint should be easy. Not so fast. First, you need the wood, and there's quite a few steps. Then you need the graphite. And this is just the simplified process. There's far more steps than I've listed here, never mind the assembly and distribution. And we're also ignoring the paint, adhesives, eraser, and let's not forget the ferrule. Perhaps even this simplified list is longer than you initially pictured. Well, that's only the first level of energy dependencies, the direct processing and transport inputs. What about the energy required to make the equipment needed to make the pencil? If the direct energy usage is this complex for something with just five parts, imagine trying to list the energy footprint for one of the trucks with tens of thousands of parts. There are many more levels we could dive into. Complex machinery has many sub-assemblies built across hundreds of different buildings. How much energy does it take to make a factory? Our civilization exists because we harness energy on a truly massive scale. From the physical to the digital, everything we make, everything we consume, it all hinges on cheap, accessible energy. Take that away and the world grinds to a halt alarmingly quickly. If we individually crafted every pencil, the cost would be exorbitant and few people could afford one. Yet despite the energy required, a pencil costs about 10 cents. Energy is cheap, unbelievably cheap, and it affects the price of everything. If it were to suddenly become very expensive, so would our pencils, and of course, so would everything else. Now that we appreciate how integral energy is, we can start to understand the scale of the challenge ahead of us and how it sets the stage for the global energy trap. When talking about energy and global challenges, there's one topic that gets a lot of attention and with good reason. Fossil fuels account for 65% of greenhouse gas emissions, making them the primary contributor to climate change. The Paris Climate Accords aim to limit this century's temperature rise to 1.5 degrees Celsius from pre-industrial levels. But are we on track to meet it? No. Last year was an emission record, beating the previous year, which was also a record, as was the year before that. Despite our commitments, we're actually accelerating climate change faster than ever. The challenge of meeting our two degree limit looks daunting and achieving our 1.5 degree goal appears highly implausible. To limit the worst effects of climate change, we need to drastically cut emissions. However, the climate isn't the only problem. Dangerous byproducts are sometimes associated with nuclear. However, carbon isn't the only fossil fuel pollutant. For instance, carcinogens and other toxic particles produced from combustion are far more dangerous. And this is a big problem in some of our largest cities. Energy scarcity and volatility also influence geopolitics. Competition over energy resources are at least partially responsible for many economic and even military conflicts. With all these problems, can we continue this way? If consumption is a major contributor, why don't we reduce it? It's not just our dependence on cheap energy that makes escaping the global energy trap so difficult. There are other global challenges that will prove extremely difficult to resolve without access to cheap energy. Food security has been a constant battle throughout human history. For all our progress, over 10% of the world is still classified as undernourished. While malnutrition had been falling, in recent years that trend has reversed. There are many reasons for this, However, it's not our capacity to produce, 
we have enough to feed everyone. One third of produce is wasted and food security is often a localized issue affected by conflict and climate shocks such as severe droughts, a problem climate change is projected to make worse. The FAO also cites economic downturns as a factor that cause and amplify food security. Countries that experience a downturn see a notable increase in hunger and economic shocks frequently create food crises through extreme inflation. Additionally, the cost volatility of fossil fuels greatly impacts food prices. This isn't a surprise since the agri-food chain accounts for 30% of global energy usage. But while this volatility increases food insecurity, the second part of the energy trap is becoming apparent. Replacing fossil fuels with a more expensive energy source will drive up food prices. Even worse, expensive energy can greatly harm economies, risking a slowdown that further amplifies food insecurity. The reason we're so reliant on fossil fuels is because they're cheap. For this challenge, it seems we can't afford to keep using them, yet we can't afford to get rid of them. For water security, the picture is similar. Rising temperatures will increase average rainfall, yet counterintuitively, global droughts are expected to increase. Population rise will add to this challenge. Today, 3.6 billion people live in a region that will experience at least one month of water stress per year, and that is projected to increase to 6 billion in 2050. Once again, the trap strikes. Promising technologies such as desalination and vertical farming have great potential to improve food and water security, but they require cheap energy to realize it. Likewise, transportation cost greatly impacts these challenges and energy cost is a significant factor. Most food and water shortages are tied to global poverty, but what's energy's role? This graph shows a strong relationship between a country's electricity access and its GDP. The link is partly due to poor countries having limited access to electricity and partly because limited electricity keeps countries poor. The UN calls this the energy poverty trap, citing that a lack of cheap energy exacerbates global poverty. Once a country has sufficient wealth to generate cheap energy, it's able to develop and poverty rates fall quickly. But of course, there's a catch. Developed economies produce more efficiently than developing countries, since they can afford better technologies. However, despite the efficiency, people in developed countries consume far more energy resulting in a much larger footprint. Contrary to the picture you may have gained from the news, the world is actually developing very quickly and poverty is reducing rapidly. For the billion people still in poverty, this is good news. But as the population shifts from low to high income economies, the result is a projected 33% surge in energy demand by 2040. To make matters worse, developing countries struggle to afford expensive alternative energy sources. So that demand may end up being delivered by fossil fuels. The global energy trap illustrates the trade-off between our dependence on cheap energy and the problems it creates. It shows how we need cheap energy to help solve some of humans' oldest challenges, yet in doing so, make some of our other great challenges worse. Escape may seem overwhelming, but the trap is built on the idea that emissions will remain tied to energy demand. It's often assumed that alternative energy sources aren't competitive with fossil fuels. But is that still true? We'll look in detail at current energy usage to see where the opportunities lie. We'll look at the various ways fossil fuels are used and what it will take to replace them. Solar, geothermal, fission, fusion. What capabilities will these technologies need to achieve? How much will they need to cost? What will it take to escape the global energy trap? Let's find out.